Hello everyone, Dr. Lee here from Your Vet Online and tonight we are going to talk all about lumps and bumps. So <laughs> if you've got a pet and or a horse for that matter because these sorts of things can actually apply to all our animals whether they're a cat, dog, horse or pocket pet. So yeah we're going to talk all about lumps and bumps and specifically I'm really wanting to cover the important things that you have to recognize and when you actually have to seek advice because some of the worst cases that vets often see are actually if they would seen them earlier then we could have saved um, a whole lot of heartbreak for you the owner and also pain for the animal because there's nothing worse than um, being in a situation where you could have actually helped the animal and cured them of say a skin cancer or some other type of cancer. So tonight I really did want to have a big chat about mainly the diagnostics related to lumps and bumps and what you guys can actually do at home um, because I think you are the ones best placed for helping your own pets so yeah you are definitely the ones that I um, want to teach and get them and get everything going so that you do the best job you can now if you haven't met me before, I'm Dr. Lee. I've been a veterinarian for about 18 years now. And yeah, as I said earlier, lumps and bumps are one of those things that as a, whether you're a small animal vet or whether you're a horse vet, we often get asked about them. Um, and it is such a common problem that I thought it'd be a good idea to help you guys um, with trying to work out when you actually have to seek further advice. So. I put a link below, make sure you definitely go and grab that because that actually um, takes you to a little body map that I've made up. So we'll talk about this in a little bit later, but it takes you through to that and um, so that you can actually download it and keep a record of everything that's going on with your cats and dogs. Now, there it is cats and dogs, it isn't horses, but hey, you can pretend a horse is a cat or a dog just for the pictures just just mainly so you know what's going on there all right so let's start and I'll just make sure I haven't forgotten anything here yeah so basically our lumps and bumps can occur at any time there's I'm not going to go too much into the different types of lumps and bumps that there are we all do know that there's some that are benign and which means they're not cancerous. And of course, there's those that are malignant, and that means that they're cancerous and they can often spread to other parts of the body. I'm not going to go into all the specifics of the different types. I'll leave that for another day. Um, but I will, I really want to stress that nobody has got x ray vision, nobody can have palpable fingers that can tell exactly what a lump is. We can have a pretty good guess, but honestly, guys, this is one of those situations where if you're the pet owner and you've been plotting on my little body map <laughs> about the lumps that you've found on your animals and you have noticed them changing, you need to demand that your veterinarian take some samples. Now, I'll talk about that a little bit later but um, in, the, in the talk tonight, but I just really want to say that nobody has, has the ability to tell exactly what a lump or a bump is. Now, also, I want to say, say hi if you're watching. Let me know you're here. Also, if you have any questions, make sure you pop them in the comments section so that I can um, I can answer them and um, anything to do with lumps and bumps. So if you've got anything that you'd like to discuss, absolutely pop them in there. And you'll see that I've put the little bit.ly um, lump and bump downloadable link there. So make sure you hit, hit that, get, get 
taken through to the um, the link to actually download the body map and then you can do this at home. All right, so let's get on to diagnostics. So as I said, this is where you guys have to take the lead. And the first thing that I want you to all to do is to examine your pets, whether they're a cat, dog, horse or pocket pet. Once a month, you are going to put your hands all over your pets. I want you to be looking at their nose, all the way over their face, ears, under their chin, and their axilla, their legs, in between their toes, um, absolutely everywhere, under the tail, all the way. No, we call it a nose to tail examination. And the idea behind that is that you get to know your pet um, and your animal, and you basically will pick up if there's issues. And what I want you to do is when you download um, this little, let's see if you guys can see it. Am I, whoops, go the wrong direction. Um, basically, let's say you find something on your dog's head. You'll put a little mark there and you can write down exactly what you're seeing in the little description and you are going to measure it and you're going to write down absolutely everything. And that is going to help you keep a record of it. So every single month, and this day should be the same. So it could be the day that you give the flea treatment, it could be the heartworm treatment day, it could be the payday for you, um, or the day you pay your rent, something like that. But just whatever you do, make sure it's the same day each time of the month so you know at least it's a 30-day change. And it, the idea is to touch every single part of your pet you know you want to know absolutely every part of them and give things a good squish you know and as i said use the body map and you're going to record where where everything is so it's examination and it's location really two important things and then the next part which is ultra important is size now this is when you need, it comes in really handy if you can get yourself a pair of calipers. Now, they are those little, um, I actually, I thought I had a pair and I left them at work, but they're the type of ruler that actually has, you can, you can put one end on one side of the lump and squish the other end in and you can actually see how how wide something is or how deep something is so really important if you don't have anything like that you might just squish a, a pen up against you know a ruler at the end just so that you can measure one side and then do it that way but whatever you do I want you to measure these lumps and bumps um, it's really really super important because if any of these lumps or bumps are a centimetre in size, you need to go to the vet because the key thing with all of this, so basically the size of an M&M really, so one centimetre because any bigger, then if we find cells that are indicative of cancer, it may, and they're a malignant cancer in particular, it means that we have to remove that much more around it. So you have a think about the size of your cat or your dog, even your horse. Like if you have a lump on your horse, the horse is a little bit different because their, their lumps and bumps tend to be, we tend to manage them a little bit differently. However, with our cats and our dogs, let's say we've got a cat with a lump which is one centimetre on their leg. Let's say when we, and I'll go into what some of the diagnostics that we'll do, but let's say we determine that it's actually a cancerous, nasty cancer, and we have to remove quite a bit of um, what we call margins around the outside. So if we've got one centimetre lump, and we need, and it's a nasty, let's say it's a fibrosarcoma in a cat, which are nasty things, 
then we will need to take probably three to five centimetre margins around that and imagine that around the whole circumference. That's a really, 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 really big area. So your poor little putty cat or dog might end up having, you know, a lump that's like, well, an area like of missing tissue that's, that can be circumference kind of like the size, bigger than a grapefruit basically, huge. Um, hey, Sarah, good to, good to see you. Um, as I was just saying, if you've got any questions, just ask away. But, yeah, if you've got to remember, we want to be looking and diagnosing what these lumps are when they're really small. So make sure you measure the size of them and then when they, if they do hit one centimetre, you know, size, you are hightailing it to your veterinary clinic. And, um, yeah, I just basically, I'm just going to put it out here. No guessing games, please. I've seen far too many situations of animals getting really, really, um, yeah, suffering because people have left these lumps for too long. And the thing is, we've got to remember, we can actually um, very easily remove most of them without actually take like with full cure see the majority of skin cancers and um, on our pets are actually curative with surgery there aren't the many as many that need to go on and have other other types of treatments to actually cure them um, so but as far as no guessing games goes you know we might as the vet we might say oh it's an older dog especially say a labrador and, you know, they quite often, older dogs quite often get lump, lots of lumps and bumps all over them. We often go, oh, it's just a lipoma, you know, it's just a fatty lump. Well, sometimes it might not be. It might be a soft tissue sarcoma or something like that. So it's always very worthwhile to test. And, you know, we might know statistics, like we might be able to say, okay, 25% of cats with tumours is going to be a benign basal cell tumour. It's all very well and good, but what happens if it's part of the 75 that aren't that type of tumour? <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's very, very important that we do one of the following tests. Now, when you, so you've, you've basically, you've been body mapping your cat or your dog or your, your horse, You've been watching this lump that you've found and it's now got to one centimetre in size. Hi, Helena. Nice to see you. If you've got any questions, just ask. <laughs> anyway, so your lump suddenly grown. So what are we going to do next? We're going to go into the clinic and we're going to take our little body map in. So if you guys haven't seen it, this is our little body map. Gosh, I'm not very good at getting the angles right here, am I? Yes. So that's a little body map where we're going to plot everything and we're going to tell the veterinarian, you know, my, let's say Pippa, my old dog, she's got a lump on her belly and it's now growing and hmm, which side was it? Because cause you know how, how hard it is to sometimes find the lump in the, <laughs> when you're in the consult? That actually happens to us all. So was it on the left side? Was it on the right side? So having this down you will be able to know exactly where these small lumps are so that your vet you can show your vet exactly where they are now the first thing that most vets will do is actually do what we call a fine needle aspirate what that is it's we don't need to very few animals will we need to sedate them for this. Usually we can just hold them. It's a very fine needle. Of course, if it's somewhere which is super sensitive, like sometimes if it's between the toes or if it's around the face, we may have to sedate. But generally speaking, if it's on the body wall or on a leg or something, generally speaking, we can do this without sedation and or clipping or anything like that and we just take the animal out the back and we just take a little sample so we pop the needle in 
and we draw out those cells. And then what we do is we then put those cells on a slide and we use a special stain, which actually shows up the types of cells that we might be seeing. So um, actually, if I pop, let me see here, I'll pop this back up and you'll see that that's the type of, um, yeah, that's the type of cells that we're looking for. So that's called a fine needle aspirate and those are cells that we're looking at. So you can see that, um, yeah, you can see that those stain up in different ways. I haven't got lots of pictures or anything like that in this. I am, I've been a little bit preoccupied over the last week. So I haven't actually written this up as a, like a proper um, article yet, but that will come this week. So make sure you um, check out our article section on the, um, on the actual, what am I saying here? I was getting rid of that. Um, on the actual website, so yourbedonline.com slash articles, and, yeah, you'll be able to keep um, keep abreast and see if there's – wait till my article pops up. I hopefully might get it there by tomorrow afternoon, maybe, maybe Thursday. Yeah, I've, I've been slack. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, back to fine needle aspirates. Basically, what we do is we look at those cells and veterinarians are trained to read those um, slides. Sometimes, though, it can be a little bit tricky and we actually need to send the slides away to get confirmation, especially if we are noticing some nasty signs within the cells that we're seeing because we're looking for signs of malignancy. Um, but if it's like... Uh, if, it, if the lump comes back as, say, a fat, fatty cell, something like that, then it's very easy for us to diagnose right there on the spot and we can tell you, yes, we know exactly what's going on. It's, it's a benign lipoma, a fatty cell, and we don't really need to do anything more. We'll keep an eye on it and we'll keep measuring it. If it gets to a size that starts to become... Um, annoying for the animal then we might take it off so remember lipomas are something that dogs tend to get and we don't see them in cats um, whereas if it's something we're worried about we may do some more tests so we may think of doing a biopsy um, often though the best idea is once we have a suspicion that it's something nasty then we actually move into the next realm of diagnosis. And basically what we start doing there is saying, okay, we think that this might be a malignant tumour or it's something that I'm not sure 100% what's going on, so we'll either send it away to be looked at or we'll think about doing a biopsy. Sometimes, depending on the size, we might say, okay, there's no point doing a biopsy because... I'm highly suspicious I'm going to have to remove the whole thing. So what we then want to do is we want to check out the whole animal and make sure that we know exactly what's going on. So we'll send the slide off, we'll get a diagnosis of what kind of um, tumour it could be because if it's a really nasty one, we're going to know that we need to take bigger margins we also know that sometimes the tumour may have already spread with being, you know, being malignant. So we have to check the lungs. We have to check the other body organs. And this is why sometimes vets will say to you, look, we've, um, like it might be a mammary cancer, for example, either in a cat or a dog. And your vet might say, okay, yep, the cells are highly suspicious just that we've got mammary cancer here. Now we're going to go and we're going to do some x-rays of the chest and look for metastases. Um, they often will also offer you the opportunity to have maybe CT with if, if it's 
available in your area or whether you want referral to go and get that done because it's a little bit more sensitive than just an x-ray. We can tell um, very, very small little cells rather than, you know, like we've got to remember that an x-ray, you've got to have enough cells in a spot to actually be able to see that there's a problem and so that means that you're further along in the stages so if it's quite early on and you've got a small um, lump or you're yeah you're you have the ability to do CT um, I would always recommend that it just seems it it gives you a better opportunity to see if there's been spread now when we do this, we also then have an idea if it's one of the nasty types, then as I said earlier, you can take bigger margins because number one thing is you want to do one surgery. You do not want to be going in again and again and again. Um, it's, hey, it's costly. It's more anaesthetics. And yeah, it's just not, um, it's not fair on the animal to have to keep having surgeries unless it's a situation where we actually do have to do it. But nine times out of 10, we should be able to get a diagnosis from either a small biopsy or a fine needle aspirate and we can do the one surgery. Um, sometimes we have to do some diagnostics with other, in other ways, like there's a, something called an impression smear. Basically, that is if you've got a, a lump that's oozing liquid and we might just push, push the slide up against it and, and do the same, whole, the same sort of process as what we do for the um, fine needle aspirate as far as staining goes and have a look at it that way. Um, as I said, sometimes we'll do a fine needle aspirate um, because if it does, we might end up having to do a biopsy instead if we can't get what we want from the fine needle aspirate. Um, if we have to do a biopsy, often we do have to give a light anaesthetic or um, some sedation um, because it's a little bit more traumatic for them. And basically we take a little bit of the lump and we put it into formalin and we send that off to the lab. Now remember, these, these things go off to a pathology lab. Um, vets don't do this sort of thing in-house. So we're looking at anywhere between three to five days, and that's business days, <laughs> to get results back. So it can be a little bit nerve-wracking. I mean, I know what it's like when you just, my, my girl, I had some, when she had lymphoma, I diagnosed that from a biopsy in the lymph nodes. So, you know, it was a bit of a waiting game, and I, so I know what it's like. Um, yeah, so it can be a little bit of a wait. The other thing to remember is some always, even if a lump comes back as being benign and your vet says, hey, it's fine, it's not a problem, just keep, keep plotting it on the body map, okay? Keep measuring it every month. Keep doing what you've been doing because sometimes people make mistakes. We're not infallible. And often with that, if that's a situation or the lump's just not doing the things that you think it should be doing, we can actually, or it's behaving in a strange way, you can ask or you can or your vet may ask for a second opinion on the actual cytology of that lump. So you don't have to go and do more um, biopsies or fine needle aspirates or anything like that. You just get the path another pathologist to look at the slides. And vets will often do this because sometimes what we see in the clinical picture, you know, your actual animal isn't matching up with what the pathologist is saying. So we sometimes are um, a little bit like, Ooh, have they got it right? And as I said, not every time. No one can be right 100% of the time. So if you're ever concerned, always ask your vet if that's an option. Um, generally, it's not a problem. And it doesn't mean you have to do anything with your um, pet either. Like you just send the slide that they've already had 
and you just send that off to get tested by someone else. Um, the other thing is sometimes lumps and bumps can be something which is completely different. Like it could be just fluid and it could be that it's an abscess, it could be a fungal thing, some sort of infectious something. So yeah, often if it's a fluidy thing, we might drain off some fluid and put it into some sort of um, special concoction and it gets tested to see what it grows. And um, yeah, that's another way we can diagnose what a lump or a bump is. Righty ho, what have you asked? Helena, let me see here. We have a 13 year old bull terrier with a couple of fatty bumps, vet confirmed. Is there a reason they get it? And is there something we can do for the other bullies not to get it? <laughs> yeah, no, look, I don't know why older dogs tend to get those. Um, it's really common. Uh, I had a foxy, she used to, she got them. I know lots of foxies with them. I know Labradors and Retrievers get them. I think it's just an old dog thing. Um, an oncologist might be able to tell you a little bit more specific, specifically why it happens in older animals. All I know is that we don't necessarily have to get them off, but some of the nastiest cases of where's the dog, because the tumor is so big, are actually lipomas and um, and these fatty bumps. So it they sometimes they do need to be removed because they can be quite fast growing. So definitely, um, yeah, definitely. There's nothing you can do about it. One thing that I wanted to say, and that's even though I'm not going to go and talk about lots of different types of tumors. We, there are some tumours that are more um, sort of relevant for certain animals and um, bullies, I was kind of thinking of, you know, your bull terriers and things because, you know, dogs and cats that are white are more prone to um, to tumours such as what we call squamous cell carcinomas and they, so Animals that are in Australia and New Zealand often get these a lot more than, say, a country that's just dark and snowy. <laughs> Maybe London. <laughs> yeah, d London seems to be in a, you know, a kind of dark place. But, yeah, so sunny places, you often see animals that are more prone to some of the skin cancers related to sun exposure. There's some cancers like your soft tissue um, sarcomas, which are in cats, which are related to injection sites. So it's kind of bizarre and I don't, again, I don't understand why, but in Australia and New Zealand, we don't tend to have a huge number of, of these soft tissue sarcomas in cats, whereas in the US, they tend to get quite a lot. It's still... The stats I was reading, they're still one in 100,000. So it's not huge numbers, but of course, if it happens to you, it's like, damn. But always think when your animal has ever had an injection, whether it's a penicillin injection, and this is cats mainly, dogs don't tend to get them, people. Um, always just mark it on your body map, the cat body map. And then just keep an eye on it because some of these areas end up getting a tumour. As I said, there must be some sort of genetic predisposition or something related to it because, yeah, I've predominantly worked with small animals in the southern hemisphere and I've never seen it personally. Um, and I know that we just don't have it as much as our Northern Hemisphere friends. So I'm not 100% sure why, but always it's in the back of our minds. Um, you know, if you do, we don't want to be giving injections willy nilly to our cats. It means that we don't, um, we're not saying they can't have injections. That's not at all what we're saying. It's just, you just got to be a little bit more careful and a little bit more, uh, aware of the places we where, where they're getting your injections all right let's see what else okay so our lump 
has got to one centimetre. It's the size of an M&M &M, um, or P. What next? Well, the majority of lumps are actually, um, and, and if we catch them this early, a lot of them are actually curable you know, with surgery. So we can cure, even if they're malignant, we often catch them early enough that we don't have any more issues. So when the vet will take out the lump, they'll send it away to, and when we take out the lump, remember we have the lump and then we have the area around it that we've got to take away as well, because, and we call that the margin. We send this all off to the lab, and it's a very good idea to do that if, if it's not a lipoma. If we know it's a lipoma, then we don't need to worry. But if it's something else, then we should always send our lumps away, and they get checked. The margins get checked to make sure they are what we call clean. And when a margin is clean, then we can rest easy. Um, we're still going to take, you know, take note and make sure that we keep our body maps going. But we don't necessarily need to do radiation. We don't necessarily need to do chemo um, because if we find that we've taken a lump off and we have signs that we've missed a margin, occasionally we'll go back in there and surgically try and clean it up. However, sometimes if you've got those, say, the, like the nasty sarcomas, they actually have what we call roots, and they and they have these long finger-like projections. So you might have your lump, but then off it are these tentacles, and it's very hard. That's why we have to have such big margins. But if we have that happen, then often we'll, we might need to have radiation on that area. There's... Um, specific areas in Australia and New Zealand and definitely in the US that offer radiation services. Um, it is a referral, um, something that is referral only. Um, and then, of course, if we have checked, say, like for my girl, I thought she had, she had lumps in her mammary glands and I checked the lymph nodes and found issues there. Um, so then we put her on chemo because it had spread. So that's the other thing is sometimes you'll do a biopsy of a regional lymph node that might be near the area. And if, if it looks like we have um, signs of cells that are there, then we look at doing, um, no worries, Helena. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll start them on chemo. Now, remember chemo affects fast turnover of cells so anything that is growing fast so cancer cells grow fast and they have high turnover and that's why we have the special chemo for that so that's why you might lose hair um, that's why sometimes you have a little bit of vomiting um, now we also our animals actually cope really well with chemo and we've also got to remember we're not giving the dosages and the horrible chemo that we often give people is completely different. So it's whilst it can be um, tough on us, it's not as bad by any means, and it's not comparable to what we see with um, you know humans and how they go through chemo. So don't ever think that you're cruel or anything like that to give. Um, chemo to your pets um, it's definitely an option and um, yeah I don't think it's I don't think it's cool at all I've done it with mine so it's not really a problem so if we are going to sum it all up basically the things that we I want you all to remember and to make sure that you're doing <laughs> is that you're going to Check your pets once a month. Number one, head to tail. Absolutely go over everything. Um, you're going to plot them on your body map, all the little things that you see, and then you're going to also measure them. And it's really important to measure these lumps. And then you can keep 
in your body map, you can keep your little diary and you'll know exactly if they're growing. And who can tell me what's the magic number? It's the M and M, the P, one centimeter. Once it hits one centimeter, you're hightailing it to the vet and you're getting a fine needle aspirate. So that's pretty much what the deal is, guys. Um, fine needle aspirates, again, not too difficult, not too hard on, and horrible for your pet. Um, it's a really, really good idea. Right, has anyone got any questions? I noticed, Helena, you asked a couple. Just wondered if anyone else asked anything. Now's your chance before I leave and go and get some dinner. <laughs> But um, yeah, I hope that was helpful. Make sure you download the body map. There's one for cats and there's one for dogs. Um, it's in that bit.ly link. And check out the website. Um, the link, link's going under your screen as we talk. And yeah, hope that was helpful to you all. Make sure if you have any questions about lumps and bumps on your pets or horses, let us know and we can... Um, we can help you out there. All right then, guys, if there's no more questions, I will catch you next week. Oh, and next week is the first of the month, I think, is it? it might be the first of the week next, um, first of the month next week. So if that's the case, don't forget Tuesday is Ask Us Anything. So make sure you tune in then. But it's the first of the month, so first Tuesday of the month. I could look at this. Oh, that's only got... Oh, it will be next week by the looks. Yeah, I think it will be next week. So, yeah, we'll catch you then if you want to ask any more questions. All right then, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. Have a good night.